Hi guys, so um, I've been working on a little bug B&B or insect hotel as some people call them over the past few days and just wanted to show you it and talk you through it and show you what progress I've been making and maybe in the process hopefully uh, inspire you to do something similar in your own gardens and help out all the, the wonderful invertebrate and insect species that we have in the UK. So here it is so far, basically, I'll just pick it up here. I, uh, I got some uh, decking timber on the bottom here and for the back and I basically made an L-shaped bracket going down here and across there out of the decking timber and then I got some old fencing panels attached those to the side and I sort of feathered them so it's a bit more watertight and then Got some wooden roofing shingles. Attach them together in a V to make a little roof. And uh, it doesn't need to be too impressive. You can knock up anything really, any, any sort of shape. As long as it's roughly watertight, doesn't need to be completely watertight. So then following that, I proceeded to get some sticks, random assorted set sticks, and uh, cut them to length roughly, didn't do it uh, too specifically but I'm sure if you're trying to make something more aesthetically pleasing you could cut these all to the exact same size and for that I just used your uh, everyday set of secateurs just cut them to shape um, so that's the stage I'm at now I've left a couple more spaces to fill stuff with so for that I have just walked over into the forestry and gathered a few things. Got some pine cones, got some old dead bracken or ferns, and I've got some pea shooters as we call them. Um, but I think it's uh, Japanese what knotweed, which is highly invasive, spreads like a pest, but I made sure that I got some dead old stuff. It's proper hollow and it's good for the solitary bees so I'm gonna pop all these things into the house now one by one fill up the space see what works Right, so what I've done here is try to account for as many different sort of habitat types as I possibly could to subsequently invite as many different insect species into the, uh, the bee hotel. So I'll just show you what I've done. So on top of the sticks that we've got on the bottom with lots of little gaps for spiders and uh, different invertebrates to live in, we've got the pea shooters up here, perfect for solitary bees and things like bee flies, which like individual tubes to um, to lay their larvae in. They'll sometimes do this, you'll see in earth, in, in, in exposed earth, where they'll burrow little holes in the ground, but things like this are perfect for them. And then above that, I've got some just loose pine cones. Um, that would be great for all manner of things with some big gaps and small gaps um, 
and maybe you'll get some spiders spinning some webs in there hopefully attract quite a few different things into there and then right at the top I've just stuffed in all this dried old bracken which will be a cosy little home for a bug or two I am sure so yeah it's looking looking pretty good overall isn't it I'm pretty happy with it um, after I after I assembled the frame I gave it all a sand down and then a lick of varnish just to make it look pretty and aesthetically pleasing um, just now need to find some way to mount it or somewhere to mount it which I haven't really thought about yet but that's to come so yeah I'm proper happy with that I'd certainly uh, snuggle up in there so guys I've just installed the bug box and I thought now would be a great time to talk to you about the benefits of these sort of projects. It's looking good though, isn't it? Building these insect oases is a great way of integrating wildlife and nature back into your patch, whether you live in the middle of the city or the middle of nowhere. Even simple structures like the one that I've built provide hidey holes for all manner of different insect species whilst providing a unique way of connecting with the wildlife and the natural world around you and just providing a, a simple garden feature that is nice to look at and you get to interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. Also, once established, the increase in insect populations could support a greater diversity of other vertebrate species that depend on the insects uh, for, for a source of food such as birds and small mammals. Now the structure that I've built is a relatively small one but there's plenty of resources online for building larger structures out of wooden pallets. These would have the additional benefit of providing habitat and nesting ground for larger vertebrate species such as your hedgehogs, frogs and toads and even some reptile species that we have in the UK. So ultimately, see what's most appropriate for you and your garden and just give it a go and help out some of the native insect species that we have in the UK in the process. Thanks for watching guys. Stay safe out there.